It shows, you show me one part of your body that you don't use, and I'll show you the part of your body that you got. So this does away with the idea where some people in church are told, some people don't. Right. Some people pray and some people don't. And I'm just like, well now, that, if that's true, we got a problem. Uh, the body is the body. You don't ever see Jesus going to heal somebody and the right side of his body goes dead and drags it up. Why? Because this part of the body is not involved in healing. And then he has to cast the devil out of somebody. This part of the body goes dead. And now he's working with the right hand. Why? Because he's casting out devils with this hand. Does everybody understand? Amen. Uh, so the body has to be involved in the work. So there's the 360 degree yeah. unit. Uh, that a preacher goes through, a department head goes through, a pastor goes through, getting everybody to participate. Amen. Amen. And once a church gets that going, where you get everybody participating, you know you're going somewhere. And I know some churches, if they can get that church to that, they're just like, they've got to stand with their signs. I mean, they're just like, we're good, we're done. We're good, we're all getting together. That's fine, that's good church. And you can have people get the Holy Ghost in that church on their own merits. Amen. Uh, they don't really have anything to do with anything the church is doing. There's not so much involvement that it increases this massive growth. Uh, you just a good church will have a handful of visitors over the year, 15 or 10. My pastor, I grew up under in Oklahoma City, said if we had six or eight people got the Holy Ghost in a year, we had a great year. Well, I mean, we live in a world of 7.4 billion people. Six? That's it? That's right. <laughs> but that's what he believed and all that. Okay, that's fine. So we just, we're fine. We have a good church. We're all clap. We're all saying. Everybody go give the altar. Call. Everybody go to the altar. We pray. Of course, it's crazy. We just hope God will fill us with the Holy Ghost because we were told if God gets ready, He'll give it to you. Well, all of the lack of amens you agree means you agree with that or you don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stay there on that point. Yeah. Uh, if we're his body, everybody say, we have to produce. We have to produce. We have to produce. So can God use a member of his body, a local congregation, that doesn't want to participate in the producing of children? Well, it'd be like my home church. Five or six in a year was a lot of year. We all got the Holy Ghost at camp. That's what we got. We didn't get it done. Why? He didn't know if he was there or not. Sermon was good 30 minutes. It'd be Wednesday or Sunday night. He'd be done at 9 o'clock. Started at 825, he's done at 5 till. He started at 830, he's done at 9. I promise you, every time. That was good. It was conviction, all that kind of stuff. But there was horizontal submission. I never heard a church problem. I never heard nobody talk back to the preacher. Nothing. Amen. Went to Bible school. Three months. I got Brother Norris sent me out to go preach at a man's church. Went to preach. He was in Illinois. And got done preaching. And a woman came right up the and said, I want to talk to you. I said, oh yeah, come on. Here. Talk fast. I stand here and he came here. She stand there. And she started to kick, 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 kick. And before I knew what I had done, I said, oh Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> I'm, I have never seen or heard anybody do a pastor that way. And I just knew lightning was coming. <laughs> <laughs> and in my mind, I said, you know, just kill the witch. <laughs> just kill her. You'll have no more trouble here. <laughs> and at best, the papers will know lightning came down, struck, and it went through the building hit her. They were just so sorry. But in the trial, but there wasn't no lightning strike. She didn't get leprosy. Her hand didn't curl up. It blew my mind. Somebody talked to the pastor. It really messed me up. I mean, I went to church, Brother Norris called me, and how did it go? I said, Brother Norris, my God, well, what's wrong? What's wrong? I told this woman, reached out, started tapping his back and screaming at him. I jumped back 10, 15 feet to foot right to the ceiling. I said, I thought God was going to strike her dead. Brother Norris was 84 years old. He started laughing. I said, I learned, Brother God. 
I said, obviously I do. <laughs> so anyway, uh, we have to have submission circumference Amen. 360 degrees Amen. in this. Amen. That's scripture. Yeah. So a church has got to learn to get along, participate, everybody get along, nobody try and step over anybody. But then when it comes to the church service and the move of the Spirit, the gift of Spirit, we have to be submitted to that which has rule over us. Amen. Amen. So I've always, you know, since I got over the Bible school, I've been at least an assistant pastor or one assistant in the church. I've never had a problem with submission. We Amen. were talking in the car. Amen. With Global Impact, Brother Morgan, I'm the oldest board member. I've been there for anybody. I'm there when he first got the dream that he had for Global Impact Revival. I'm number two, but I never say anything. Do it. When it comes time to work, I'm there. Set the chairs up, Dave Smith's Southern Union's be doing a store conference, and we'd be folding the tables up, cleaning up the kitchen, and sweeping it. Look how much he's doing that. People think, look at God, come sit down, sit down. People do that. I said, no, I'm doing this good talk, no problem. So you have to know your place, is what I'm saying. Okay? And so in the vertical, the spiritual leadership, you have to understand pastor, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. Fivefold ministry is the shoulders of the church, and the rest of us are in the body. Amen. We're members in particular, in share or portion. So we're, you look at the whole global, you look at God looking at this chair like it's the world, and then off this chair is this phone which represents the church. And that's made up of all of us in the whole world. People that are born again. That's the way He sees us. So if we are His body, and there's discord in the body, Horizontally or vertically, there's cancer. That makes sense. So what there's we, problems. So what do we do to make sure that that doesn't happen? Well, what, that's what we're talking about. That what has to happen is, is there has to be number one horizontally. We have to understand we're members in particular. Nobody's Amen. greater than anybody. Amen. No matter how much money I've got, or don't have, you've got, no how long you've been here, senior members, it don't matter. First of all. We're all submitted one to the other because we are a body. Amen. Amen. No member is greater than the other member. Amen. Praise. In my body. Is that correct? Is that correct? Amen. I'm getting one good strong amen out of a bunch of Y'all are going to make me prove what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I've been here one time, first time, it could be my last time. So I didn't change it, bless God. <laughs> amen. So we have to be submitted one to the other. So we're his body. So this local church. Pastor, talk to us. That's what's going on. Amen. Trying to get unity in the body horizontally. Then vertically, Amen. we have to understand, okay, when it comes right down to it, the bishop's got the final say, and that's it. Everybody else is going to have to like it or lump it. Take a long walk off a short bridge. <laughs> <laughs> that means don't you? You're going to walk right out into the water. It's southern, so I had to explain to you. <laughs> <laughs> Amen? Amen. And so, you know, that, that's what makes it, even leadership makes it uncomfortable when we have to move into the spiritual position of our leadership. And, and so that's, that's horizontal, first of all, most important. So once we get this 360 degrees, then we've got the vertical. So that brings the cross in the church. Praise God. Amen. That's what brings the cross effect, the dynamic of the cross Amen. in church. That's what brings us when we're submitted one to the other. And then when we can submit to the authority that's over us. Amen. To get in the church, we're a wild person. We're just somebody out here dead in sin, trespasses. Amen. Right. But one person gets moved and the Holy Ghost touches them and they come into the church. Now they get connected all these new friends they got. But at some point they're going to learn, I'm not only just in this, but now I've got, oh, I've got this message. Now don't do that. Oh. Hmm. They've never listened. They've been a wild kid, been a wild young person doing something. They come into the church. Everybody's loving on them, but then they're around that pastor. You don't need to do that. What's going on? Vertical. Amen. Amen. Is that making sense? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So horizontal leadership and vertical Amen. leadership brings the cross. And the cross, when a church gets unified, here's the underlying thing, when the church gets unified horizontally with each other, 360 degrees, and vertically, 
That's when the cross is at the church. That's when the Holy Ghost is moving. That's when they're making the greatest dynamic move that's possible. So everybody's going to make that to you say we need to get our personal act together. We need to get our personal act together. Amen. Amen. Everybody say amen. 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 So when there's, there's twice in Scripture, once Jesus said when there's two or three gathered in my name, I'll be in the midst of them. Yep. And then if two of you agree on anything, it shall be done. But that has to do with these two people in the church coming together in agreement. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, miracles begin to take place. Correct. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, there's people in the church that they will let the preacher pray for them. But nobody else. But nobody else. Mm -hmm. And they're not going to get likely get healed. Mm -hmm. Because God connects sometimes our healing, our deliverance, our answers to the connection of the body. Right. Mm -hmm. And when that begins to flow and that begins to work correctly, miracles begin to happen in the body. Not just in the outside or the fringes, but miracles in the body begin to happen. And then it begins to create an environment where a harvest can take place. That's great. Everybody say, we are a body. We, we are a body. body. Not I am a body. We are a body. I mean, born again, we are being baptized into Christ. Christ is in us. Amen. The hope of glory. Amen. Him being in all of us. We've all got the Spirit of God in us. That makes us members, lends your parts. Amen. So, again, as he said, if all we have is the connection between you and God and the pastor, and you do what he says, and you come in here, and we'd say down south, as scripture says, you're a wild ass on the loose. You're just wild, out of control, can't, you're not going to listen to nobody who calls you trouble. Well, now there's there's a problem here. What you've got, you've got supposed verbal submission to the pastor, but you're not submitting to nobody else. That ain't going to work. Why, you know, I can't just get with God and that'd be it. No, you can't. Why? Because he baptized us into his body. Praise God. Repentance, water, baptism, and peace, saying that the baptism of the Holy Ghost and this by speaking tongue. That one, in God's mind, that one thing, three parts, repentance, baptism, and Jesus' name, permission, sin, and baptism of the Holy Ghost, that one act takes us out of the world and puts us in Christ. Amen. 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 But now we have to offer, we have to function on now I want to be with everybody. I've got to be in harmony with everybody. Amen. It's like playing football. Okay, the Buckeyes, they're in good harmony. They're winning. They're number one or number two in the nation. They're doing good. Now, Alabama, they got a little hitch in the gear yet. Now, to come out of that week and a half, they have like 18 penalties and all this kind of stuff. And what's happening? Well, you, know, you listen to the coach, and they're not listening. I'm telling them they got to do this, and you got to do it this way, and they're listening to what's wrong. They probably got the best athletes, but they got a real horrible attitude toward each other. Therefore, they're getting a lot of flags on them. And they lost. That's the natural illustration. Don't I understand? So if they can get harmony with each other, they're going to play better. And then they're going to be in harmony with the coaches, which Amen. is their vertical. Coaches are over. Everybody understand? Amen. So if they can have harmony on the team, 360 degrees of them, and then they can be in harmony with the coaches, who can win? But Alabama lost. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, does that make sense? So, you just can't have a good relationship with the pastor. You've got to have that with the vertical leash pastor, leaders in the church, and then he has evangelists come through or whatever. Maybe he has one or two to come through that are just great teamwork with the church, and, and you know they're, they're part of the leadership. Amen. Brother Starks, his dad, when his dad comes. Amen. I mean, Amen. He's like an apostle. Amen. I agree. I've never said that in any way. Just, Amen. That's probably what he is. Amen. He travels the world. Amen. Affects thousands and thousands and thousands. Amen. Amen. He has an apostle's anointing on him. So he would be in leadership in his church. Is that correct? That's correct. Amen. So Amen. he's pastor. Amen. Which means he's always here. Amen. Apostle may come in once every now and then. Is that right? Yeah. 
Evangelist may come in more. Prophet may come in every now and then. Teacher, he can be both pastor and teacher. But a good pastor knows how to teach. <clears throat> if he can't teach, he needs to make sure he gets something else after they can teach. Why? Because you have to have to have the final ministry. To have that cross member, you have to have all that. Yes, sir. All right. It, doesn't it depend on a person's growth and where they are? I mean, Harmony? It, yeah. Because there's different things. There's different... People are in different uh, aspects of their Christianity. Okay? To me, it seems like there are some that are just in, some that have never given themselves over. So, if somebody wants to harm me, how do I go about it? Yeah, well, I would say, first of all, and it may be what you said, but I would say, first of all, to be in the body of Christ, right. you have to be born again. In that. Period. That means right. repentance, water baptism, in Jesus' name, for the remission of sins, and the baptism of the Holy Ghost, giving us my speaking other tongues. That, those three parts, make the one event of being born again. So that, that's what we're talking mm -hmm. about there. Okay. So when a person comes into the body, which it can be people that, I mean, we've got people getting all this down in order, the church I go to. Mm -hmm. We've probably got seven or eight that are there right now. Never been in contact with any church of any kind. But they're born again. So what do they have to know? First thing they have to know is we got to submit to each other now. This, that doesn't come to them right away, right. but they can tell by the group of people in the church. Everybody's how you good to see you. They love you. Good see yeah. Everybody's coming in and greeting each other. I go to churches, preach, and walk in and don't see 5% of the church shaking hands. I don't even need the Holy Ghost. I know we got a problem. Y'all are brain dead idiots, what you are. <laughs> I don't say from the pulpit, that's what's in <laughs> They are. I mean, you're just, you're, you're a cotton picking, stinking, ding bat idiot. <laughs> I'm preaching to church people. This is leaders or warming leaders. Right. I'm talking plain to you. Right. Amen. Everybody understand? Amen. So there has to be that kind of submission to one another. Yes. And it doesn't only come, I submit, I submit. But if they can't, hi, how are you? Hug and hugging How are you? Us. Good to see you. Good to see you. If you can't do that with all the people that are in your church, how are you going to do that with people that come in, got 27 earrings in their face, nose, lip, eyes, ears, sides of the head, back of the head, in their hair? I mean, tattooed everywhere. How are you going to say hi to them? Yeah. You understand? So, church has got to get it together where we understand, hey, this is my friend of the church in town. Right. And I'll be with pastor said, welcome to church and shake somebody and say, we're my friend of the church in town. What are they doing? He's trying to get unity in the church. What he's trying to do. Praise God. Amen. 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 And so once you get all that going, where it's comfortable to bring guests, because the guests will talk. They'll outdo your music, your advertising sign. A guest will outdo everything you've got for outreach. If it's bad, they're going to sink your battleship. If you're rude, you can just mark it down. There are going to be a bunch of people in that next seven days that's going to know the bad about you. Or, if you're friendly, starting in the parking lot, you're getting on a car, you say, hey, how are you? Good to see you. Walk over and shake your hand. Plus. Walk up close to church. Now you get people out of your sign. Welcome here. You're the boom shakalaka. <laughs> that's good. That's, that's, that's point number two. Amen. The door, someone's open the door. Hey, good to see you. They're glad. That's, that's point number two. Walk in. There's somebody with coffee and donuts. That's good. point number four. Amen. Walk through the door of sanctuary. Somebody's got the door. How are you? Good to see you. That's point number five. And then you're on the way to the seat. Two or three people stop. How are you doing? And then you sit down. The people in front of you behind you. How are you? Good to meet you. Well, now you're Praise ten. Ten, ten pluses already. And Amen. you ain't heard a from the singing or the preacher. Amen. Amen. Good point. Amen. It makes sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. But now, you've got a church that's not submitted to one another. And we got a rebellion problem. Everybody's doing their own thing. Guess walks in. Music's going. Singers don't act like they're enjoying it. I tell people, look, when you come to church, no matter how bad of a week you're having, fake it for two hours. <laughs> when church is done, you can go home and be suicidal. But for two hours, <laughs> I tell you, you can be suicidal. But now for these two hours, you have to fake it. <laughs> and act like you're happy. Especially if you're on this platform and you're 
<laughs> now you see why I don't pastor. Hallelujah. <laughs> They said you get the point across. Amen. 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 Does that make sense? Yes. So we have to be submitted one to another, friendly, Amen. kind. Yes. Yes. And then they start singing. Everybody's singing. The Bible says make a joyful noise. It doesn't say sing harmonious in the choir. Make a joyful noise is the first level of praise. Amen. Just sing some song. Nobody ever heard you do this. <laughs> Make a joyful noise. <laughs> My mother-in-law who died long ago before, 10 or 11 years ago, she could carry one tune out of any song. <laughs> and we all got back to Christmas and was talking to her. And uh, we were joking about who would we'll sit by and fight. She said, that's okay, fine. God has me in every service because I'm the only one that sings like I sing. We just cracked up. And so, but she was serious about it. So she, she brought the joyful noise thing. Was like, oh. Brother Martin, her boys, superintendent of Oklahoma, pastor she do in Oklahoma, and I was an evangelist. Everybody was involved in leadership at the church. Like, oh, okay, so we were all trying to get next to Dodie. But if you sat next to her, you had to be very focused and locked in, and really singing louder <laughs> to hear yourself so you could stay on key. Because <laughs> she was horrible. <laughs> but she knew to make a joyful noise. Amen. Amen. And you look at her, she'd be crying, her hands be God. Praise God. She may talk in tongue like because she knew. God knows my voice. Yeah. Amen. Make sense? Amen. So now back on the unity thing. If we're all if the church can get to a level of unity right. where we're glad to see each other, we share each other. Amen. Amen. Now we have the chance of, oh God, now we're gonna try to bring some guests. <laughs> Amen. No, please not forgive each other. Talk to our guests. That becomes a major deal in the church. Amen. Got someone comes in, looks like a sinner, and hardly anybody talks to them. We got a problem. Everybody say amen. 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 Sinners are supposed to be like sinners. All right, am I doing okay? Yes. Amen. 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 So we have to we have to get unified enough that on Sunday morning at least the sinner get her service of the week, whatever it is. When the pastor's gonna preach the gospel to the sinners and you know it, your job is to say amen, hallelujah, praise the Lord, and greet the guests and be in the altar to help pray them through. That's your focus today. Now tonight, you can come in, be a dead head, sit back in the right hand corner, frown, do all that stuff. We don't have guests on Sunday night, but Sunday morning, y'all better be thinking. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Am I making my point? Yeah. Amen. So that's the first level of church. And the fivefold ministry then, of course, comes in with their vertical. Well, now you have vertical connection. You have to understand there's, there's authority over me. So in the world, it's every man for himself, every woman for himself. And now when you get into church, you come into a church of order. And so there's submission. Horizontally and vertically. Everybody say, I'm not my own man. I'm not my own man. I'm my own woman, whichever you are. Amen. We're limbs and parts of the body. Amen. Yes. Okay. Amen. Amen. Yes. We're ambassadors for Christ. Yes. Amen. We're ambassadors for Christ. And that ought to affect where we go, how we dress, how we carry ourselves, who we are. And I think one of the strongest definitions, we were talking about it earlier, is this idea of he's going to take care of my needs. I'm going to seek him, his will, his purpose first because he can take care of my needs. If we're going to do Jesus versus others, second yourself last, then you've got to have confidence that your needs are going to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. But when you have insecurities and you're not looking out for others, and you're, it's, you're all about me, all about I, about number one, oh my. We're about ourselves. And, and so therefore, we're not concerned whether or not somebody in the body is offended with us. You know, well, they just got what they deserved. Uh, boy, I hope you don't get what you deserve. Yeah. 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 Mic drop. But anyway, the whole, <laughs> the, whole, the whole thing, though, is when we start functioning in the body where we're concerned about our relationship with others, 
then what's going to happen automatically is when we go out into the world, we're going to realize that we're not the only person in Menards. Right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I was there yesterday, an hour, was <laughs> an hour ago, gentlemen, there in the aisle. So, you know, but you start realizing there's people out there Amen. that they're not just in the way. They didn't just cut you off. They just didn't steal your grocery cart or not, you know, take their quarterback out of the Aldi's cart. And like, oh, really? <laughs> Amen. Right. Now, all of a sudden, because you're functioning, you're, you're realizing the importance of your relationship with others above the needs of self. Because God's going to take care of the needs of self. I don't have to worry about the needs of self. I'm, I'm calm. I'm collect, I'm confident in myself and my relationship with God. Good point. Mm -hmm. Now I'm focused. And so then when I'm out and about, I don't have these insecurities. I know my needs are taken care of. I'm not worried about the gas prices. Mm -hmm. To be honest, you know, just to bring up a current event thing. God took care of me when it was, you know, under three dollars a gallon. He's going to take care of me when it's five dollars a gallon. Yeah. Amen. That's correct. You know, God met the needs when McDonald's Happy Meal was. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to meet the needs now that it's twelve bucks. I, I, I just, he's he's taking care of things. I don't have to. Amen. Right. Now I'm focused on the people that I need to be focused on, and I realize God's going to take care of things. Yep. Amen. You know, we get into, um, is this okay? We, we get into things, well, we've got to protect our kids. We've got to do this, we've got to do that. Wait, wait a minute here. God's on the throne. Yep. Right. Amen. 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 God's on the throne. We're, 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 we're applying our hesitation or our carnality and using our kids as an excuse. Mm -hmm. Somewhere in that process, we've got to stand up and say, listen here. Amen. God's got us. Amen. Amen. He's going to take care of us. That's what my parents did. When I'd come home from camp or couldn't get the whole news, I'd come, I always had to come in the door, had to be there before 11 o'clock. I could get there five or 10 minutes or I'd come in on home, my bed. They'd always be awake waiting on me. Didn't know me when I was a kid now. I'm a third set of kids. I'm like, oh my God. Wait for the kids. But I got there and I, and I ended up talking about church. Why can't I get the whole of And all the time I would complain, grind about church being dead. Nobody gets a hold of church. They never one time affirmed or said anything against Pastor Brother Wade. Not once. They would always say, Greg, you're going to get the Holy baby. Just keep focused. Just keep focused. You're going to get it. They would just keep that what they would say every time. That's why I jumped like I did when I wanted to come to that. I just knew this will never be. And my that's what she was. I don't care if you're religious and had to hold the standard right. She was a nasty. Well, I'm not gonna say what came in my mind, but anyway. She was bad news. Now, can you imagine you walking up? I got quiet, so I'm gonna stay on that point. Can you imagine yourself walking up your pastor? Do you think anybody see you doing that to your pastor? No. The hell, wait a minute. Pastor called me the other day, hey, Greg, I need you to come over to the house, bring the boys I need you to put a driveway in my house. I've got some dirt I need to show. I said, yes, sir, be right there. I mean, I've been to Vanders 31 years. I'll be 32 this year. I've been preaching 38 years. And you can call me and say, come over to the house, I need you to move some dirt. You crazy in your mind? <laughs> that thought, those words, never. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, sir. Come on, boy. But sorry, he needs to loose and dirt. Something wrong with that school. It seems to go Jump the truck, took off. Three big piles of dirt. He dug up some trees. Up and them, left it all there. Poured cement all the way across the yard. Big circular drive. Up and all the grass. Edge a foot and a half wide from out the cement. He wants grass put back. I said, I got two issues. You sure? Yes, sir, I got it. Walk out here and probably three hours later, job done. But I took him away and I said, what happened today? What well, I explained to him. Pastor called. I said, yes, sir. He told me what we needed and we did it. Yes, sir. That's what happens when pastor asks for something. That's how you do it. Amen. 
I got one good amen in the whole bunch of years. You're sleeping for lunch. I'm ready for a fight or a drunk Texas. Whatever you want to do, I'm kidding. Amen? Does that make sense? Amen. And that has to flow that way. Don't matter, no matter, I'm an evangelist, I'm the assistant coordinator now for UPC. Uh, I'm the weekend preacher in Cleveland. Most people don't know him. I know him, but Morgan knows him, you know him. But in the whole body of Christ, people know me. That may be a handful, but everybody don't know me. So what we have to do, we're going to have to get drunk on our little position in your church to where you become untouchable. That makes sense? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you're, you're a vital part of the body. And I'm, I'm saying this again. If any part or member of your body gets out of order, which means doesn't do what it's supposed to do, cancer starts with one bad cell mm -hmm. that is refusing to do what it was made to do. That's where cancer starts. That's natural. Now take it in the spirit. We're the body of Christ. How does church problems start? With one cell, person, limb, or part, gets their attitude, gets offended, gets ticked off. Isaiah 14, he said, I, Lucifer, the anointed chair, said, I will exalt myself. He said, I will five times. Right. Had that thought to himself. And God threw him and one third of an innumerable of angels out of heaven like lightning at 186,000 miles per second. God threw Lucifer and one third of the angels out of heaven at 186,000 miles per second. <laughs> and hit this earth. Right. With a bad thought. Look at somebody say, oh Lord, Jesus help me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a thought. All right. The well, point I'm trying to make is, is the body, we can't have one cell Amen. out of the court. We have to be in unity. Now, we know the rapture is about to take place. It's on us. We're just a handful of years away. I don't know if you've heard that lately, but I'm telling you it's that way. Just say amen so I keep going. Amen. <laughs> now, the rapture takes place is going to be 14, 15 year old girls. They're going to be 28, 29 year olds. Was I close? <laughs> yes, you were great. Thank you. <laughs> but really, does that matter? I mean, well, what I'm saying is, is, it matters for this group. We have right. to focus on why? Because the last outpouring is a boss. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, amen. But you should be living for God anyway. Well, that's what right. I'm saying. I'm talking to people who are saved. Right, right. That are acting like mm -hmm. they're not saved. Right. How? Yeah. By not being submitted. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Right. Amen. You understand? Yeah. Now, in the whole church of the kingdom and everything, he sees us all as limited parts. He sees all of us as cells. Amen. Yeah. In his body. Right. Amen. Put together miraculously. I mean, from all the places we've come from. Right. I was born in New Mexico. Six months later, mom and dad were transferred to Alaska. Dad was in the Air Force. My dad went to Greenland. Mom raised us there. Three months after we got to Alaska, the earthquake hit 1964. Look it up when you get home. 9.2 on the Richter scale. Leveled Anchorage, Alaska. The richest part of the city was up in the lower parts of the mountains. It became a massive mudslide, and everybody died and drowned. Cracks two and three feet wide, as far as you could see. City, the roofs became level with the ground. The whole ground just dropped. Boom. My mom was in a little about five o'clock that afternoon, four thirty. I was sitting in a high chair. Dad was sitting with his chair in, against the, in a chair against the back corner, uh, the cabinet. My mom had to start shaking. My chair started bouncing. She caught me in midair and it held her on the ground for about four and a half to five minutes before the ground could shake. Dad was pinned to the cabinet. And when she got, when it got done, she rolled with my dad and said, Dad, Frank, you've got to tell me that church you grew up in. We've got to get to church. Amen. He was UBC. Amen. His first wife divorced him. 
Three years after they were married, his life was a total mess. My mom's a little country girl. I got pictures of my mom standing outside her house. She could see through the walls. My mom was sweeping. <coughs> Had a pile of dirt about that high. Just swept the house out. That's how much dirt came out of the house. Had five kids. One room. It's, it, it passed as the living room, the kitchen, and the bedroom. It was a shed. But when she got done shaking and laughing, she you got to tell me. Praise God. And 25 days, they found the church. Amen. 30 days later, Mom prayed through. 30 days later, Dad prayed through. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> what do you say? What, this body. Yeah. Amen. This is important what's going on. So we're down here now. We're teaching the session. So we're down here in this little segment of the body. This little piece of the body. Amen. And we're checking. Amen. Is there any cancer? Amen. I don't feel no disorder. Amen. Amen. So if we got everybody in order this way, and then you're in order to your leadership, this part of the body can have revival. Praise God. Praise God. Because I believe the Holy Ghost is hitting. Brother Dross was somewhere last night. Had 70 some people got the Holy Ghost last Praise night. Praise God. Amen. 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 It was Love in uh, Maryland, where it was. We lived for one night. 70 some people got the Holy Ghost. A couple months ago, 760 something got hold of one night. Praise God. Praise God. It's happening. Amen. It's Amen. happening. And the rapture is going to take place. So, what we're saying is we've got to all be focused, all be unified. And you know what? You got offense at somebody, pray through about it. Let it go. If they want to stay mad at you and go to hell, let them go. Amen. Amen. You've got to be saved. Amen. That makes sense? Amen. Amen. Good. Yeah. So, that's what we're talking about. I just keep repeating myself because I feel like that's where we're at catching the horizontal and the vertical. Amen. They are connected horizontally to each other. And then it's easy for us to connect with it. Amen. How many times have I said that today? Right. Yeah. 12, 15, 20 <laughs> times. Right. Right. I'm repeating the point. Amen. It has to happen. Amen. Because what you want is you don't want just church that says I have solid church out of sign. I mean we want that. But we want that to be that. Amen. 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 We don't want to have a sign out from our church that says we're the church. We won't be the church that says that's the church. Amen. 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 And I think that's why when most people come visit our church, they're blown away. It can, you know, I've heard some of you testify, and I know the church talking about the music's horrible. Like, but they're crying, oh my God, won't you let the Holy Ghost? Amen. And everybody loving each other. I said, oh, that's true. They do love each other. That music is horrible. They think it was fabulous. they have never been to a church or in their life of any kind. It was just beautiful. Yeah. You understand? So the unity and the harmony creates that Christ likeness. That's something that they see people happy. Amen. Amen. And you mean you did? You didn't drink Jack Daniel before you came to church? No. <laughs> you didn't smoke a joint? Amen. Amen. You didn't even smoke a cigarette? No. You don't get smell. No. My, I'm so happy you got God. How do you do that? Talk to the tears. Talk like, what's going on? Vertical submission, horizontal submission, God's going to be there. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Go ahead and make the next part. Well, I, I keep trying to serve you. We keep coming back to the same point. I know that. You love the Holy Ghost. So I, just, amen. I just want to make sure we're... Um, amen. So let, let me stay there just a minute longer because... One of the things about, and I'm going to go back to, to my side of that, is because we're all in ourselves. So your prayer life, what is the conversation about? Amen. Do you bring to God, and, and I don't mean to, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, <coughs> every day you bring God to do this? These are the ten things I need. You be a good God and get those done, and I'll come back tomorrow with another list. <laughs> Not trying to be rude. I, I'm, I'm talking about our perspective. Because if we really believe God's going to take care of everything, why is our all of our conversation about self? Why are we going into prayer? about what God needs. 
Yep. I believe in prayer. I mean, when you go in, you start out with praise. Mm -hmm. That's what the Lord says. You start out with praise. God, I love you. I thank you for this day. I give you praise. Thank you for giving me the Holy. You're praising for a few minutes. And then you go into maybe your request like he's talking about. But now, after a few minutes of that, you go in and start praying for people coming to church, lost members, people who used to be in church and aren't at church anymore praying. And then somewhere along in there, your prayers are going to shift again. And it's going to be intercession. Right. Amen. You, you may not have an idea what you're praying. The Spirit Amen. of God's praying through you. You don't have a clue what it's about. Amen. I told him a story to Sister Chenault. So elderly lady lived in Oklahoma, Guthrie, Oklahoma, north of Oklahoma City, about 35 miles. They took a vow of poverty. When she died, she had three or four teeth in her mouth. But she could read anybody in here to like a book. Walk okay. right in, say, but they else? And she tell you stuff been happening today, Praise God. last night. She was absolutely unbelievable. Praise God. Seeing a general conference, be standing there talking to us. Where's Brother Foster? Who wrote them? Which one? It was Mark and Fred Foster, and Tom Foster, and Debbie Foster. Which one? Tom, Brother Tom Foster. Where's Brother Tom Foster? I said, I don't know. And I look, there he is coming in. Brother Foster! Brother Foster! And she starts screaming in the altar, at the end of the altar. And he, I mean, he's embarrassed. How many people looking at him? She said, Brother Foster. Tears started running. She said, I love you, Brother Foster. I love you. She said, She's walked on. Ready like a comic book. <laughs> she was praying <clears throat> one night and got into intercession. And in a few minutes, she was out of the body. Literal out of body experience. She was flying over the United States. Praise God. And she knew she was headed towards California. News of West. She knew when she went over the Colorado Mountains. And knew when she went up the Pacific Ocean. She kept going. All of a sudden, she realized. She started coming down. She realized, oh, I'm in China. And she looked, and there's a big, huge, rough building. Whew, goes right to the roof. Goes to one floor, two floors, goes into the third floor. As she gets to the third floor, she goes slowly through it. And it's hovering in the ceiling of the third floor, which was in the dungeon. And looked down at the floor of the dungeon. Nothing in the room but one man in a gown, curled up in the middle of the floor, sleeping. She knew and she saw him. This is an apostolic preacher. And she prayed for him through the night. Praise God. When the morning started, she lifted out of the prison and flew back to the house. Praise in God. In the little shack they lived in. Praise God. Amen. Now, I ain't never even got close to that. Amen. I mean, never even close. I ain't never had even close out of body experience. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to be used for more like that. Please, Lord. Please, Lord. Amen. 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 What I'm saying is, is there is a dimension of prayer where what he's talking about. God literally uses us. Praise God. Amen. To affect people. Amen. 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 Is it? Yes. The example I, I use is um, did you ever hear somebody praying in tongues and sound like they were yelling? Sure. Were they yelling at God? No. In other words, was God yelling at himself? Mm -hmm. So the focus, when we begin to intercede, God's not speaking through us back to himself. No. God's speaking through you directly to the situation. Yes. He's using you. And you start understanding the role and you start getting into this, this concept of, wait a minute, God wants to use me, and if I let God use me, everything else is going to be taken care of. I'm not against praying for things sure. that you need. I'm, I'm just, sure. we spend, if, if that's all we are, then we're not worried about the body, we're not submitted one to another, we're, we're probably not submitted to the pastor, because that's, that's our focus. It's only about us. We don't trust God to give us. Mm -hmm. Everything we need. Yep. Dimensions of prayer. And this is a this is a, a group of people that are studying. So we're, we're talking about some deep things here. And we talk in the congregation. We might just touch this. Amen. You know, and we talk about you need to pray. Uh, it's a new day. And you said thank you, Lord, waking you up. And that's what we talk about. But now we're past that, which maybe some of us are just still there. We're just getting you to thank God every day of your life. And then you maybe take five minutes to pray. 
I was in church recently, the pastor said, you know, it'll take two or three minutes in the morning, you get up and pray, and ask God to protect you, and all that. two or three minutes, I'm just blown away. But that's where the church is. Ain't no sense talking to them about praying three hours when they can't play three minutes. Mm -hmm. She's way over the mark. So we're bringing, bringing up. So in this group, that's why we're talking about talking, we're bringing the mark up because you're hungry people. You're here on non-church nights. You're here during the day. Ohio State's playing. You're not home watching it. You're focusing on God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Would you say that? Does that make sense? Amen. So this group, we're talking about intercession. This is when you begin to pray. You've done your prayer for yourself, your family, your situation, your job, school, whatever's going on. And then you just keep praying, keep laying in there. And then the Holy Ghost moves in. And now you just know you're praying in other tongues. It's God praying through you. Amen. That's what intercession is. Is when God begins to pray through you. That would be the deepest. And, and kind I of would prayer. say, would you I say, agree. Pastor, I would say that's the deepest level of prayer when yeah. God's praying through us. Amen. Yes. So that's what we're talking about. Right. Now that can't happen if there's not unity. Amen. Not submitted one to the other and vertically. You will never pray intercessory warfare like you say if you're a member that's out of order. You can forget it. Here we pray in it. I couldn't get in there. Why? Because God's on top of it. You're not breaking through. What's the ceiling? The ceiling is you're not submitted one to the other. Right. If you get see it now, then you get a break. Then all of a sudden other things start opening up to you. Amen. 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 Because if you try to enter into the, into the supernatural and you're not submitted, that's that's like using the table saw without the guard on it. Yep. You're going to cut your fingers off. Cut your fingers off. There's, there's going to be something that's going to happen. Yep. It's, you're not in a safe place. We were in the car talking about a situation, and I just popped in bed. I'll use this. Pastors in a group that were with pastors, evangelists, some big churches, some little churches, some powerful churches, some good churches, just not real powerful. Good. We're all together. And I, but I told them, I said, but when we come together under this other auspices, and we're in the meeting, there's not but one head. Ain't but one person in charge. We don't have five. Now, you may be over a little department in this group, but when we come together in a group meeting, you ain't over nothing. So one thing bad is you can have somebody in leadership. Uh, well, I just say that we're doing the crusades and stuff across from California, down south, across I-10. Brother Morgan had a train years ago, back in 1987, with a spiritual stronghold that he found out from Brother Barnes and Brother Coles. The seventh spiritual stronghold in the world is from New Orleans to Houston. Its head wraps around, tops, drops down over New Orleans, body lays down across I-10, and his back end and his tail wraps around the city of Houston. And he knew in 1910, when that spirit, God showed him when that breaks, there's going to be fire fall. The Holy Ghost is going to fall over North Amen. America, Canada and Mexico. Hallelujah. He's been doing this since 1987. Hallelujah. So we got this meeting going on. We've been doing a crusade. Had a lot of people get the Holy Ghost. But now, since 1987, he's been focusing on this little strip of land from Houston to New Orleans. Now we understand what it is when the cold confirmed it, whether Barnes confirmed it, whether A.D. Spears confirmed it, even California preaching, talk about Holy Ghost and fire falling down Interstate 10 all the way across the United States. So now here we are at a dream that started with Brother Morgan in 1987. It's finally coming together. And we're at this moment now where we're focusing in on it. What do we got to have? We have to have the body has got to be in submission. One to the other. When it comes to that meeting, when it comes right down to the church, I told you, who said you got none? I mean, I've been down there. For Azusa, we did in uh, 2006. We had Azusa, Brother Haney had all that happen. I was in the Bible with Brother Libby. He looked at me in a group about 30 preaching. Brother God, I want you to cancel you. Where you at? I'm in the Bible with Brother Libby's America. He said, okay, call him, tell him. I said, you need to cancel. You need to come to California. I said, whoa. I said, I need to what? He said, you need to shut your Bible down, come out to Azusa out in Los Angeles and oversee this. So I did it. I went out there and ended up the guy that was over it quit because he wouldn't, he didn't get the, uh, he was over it, but was pastoring the church, so he couldn't be out there every day for two months. 
I was a man as I could, so I would just be on site work with him. No problem. But they knew how it was. He quit. Well, now it's all on me. I went for two months. Every night preached from New York City to California. Everywhere. When it came the week of the Azusa, I had no voice. I was just like that. Preached from Mike Mitchell Sunday morning. Had a little bit of voice. Got up Sunday afternoon. No voice. My, my voice is gone. He said, oh my God. Look out my door. Now just stay in the hotel. I'll get you to the airport going. Okay. Flew to California. Went and got some CPAC. Got to open my voice a little bit. Had just a little bit of whisper. They were all wanting me on platform and said, no, I'm not doing anything. The whole event, when it came time for tea time, golf and talk, ten ball, I wasn't know where to be sitting. I was back, left hand side of the platform, back in the back, chairs sitting over here. Everybody else out here. Four or five thousand people all out here. I was back in the back. Happy as a hog in a slot. <laughs> Why? Because I understand. My job was to come out here and work. If these pastors that never communicate, never no such thing as submission, never have rallies, never go to church together. So now I got two months to get these knotheads together. I'm saying a joke. <laughs> How did it happen? Had to have meetings every day, two or three, four pastors every day, every day, all over Los Angeles, San Diego, every day. And what happened? There were preachers that were in church together. They were crying and hugging others. One of them's next hand. Never been chucked now. I'm sorry. We hadn't been together. Brother Haney, Brother Keys, Brother Wilson said, never had anything like that in the south of California ever. I thought that was a good service. Thank you, Jesus. The point is, is can you do your part? Can you be submitted? Can you be the usher? Can you be the piano player? Can you be the assistant? Can you be the janitor? Can you do your part and stay in your place? And the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Amen. That's Amen. what we're trying to talk about. I keep coming back to that, but that's Amen. that's what we're talking about. Amen. 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 Um, there were two teenage twins being held in handcuffs in the basement by their mother. Mm. And they got loose. Mm. They, they got a hold of the key and got out of the house. Wow. And this is what happened in Cleveland. Some of you were remember those oh. three ladies in that guy's basement. Right? Mm -hmm. when, when we started having that breakthrough in the atmosphere in Cleveland, things like that began to happen. Yes. Those girls got out. There would be people, traffic people through Cleveland, and they would get away every time. Right. Because when when God comes in, when, when those warring angels comes in, mm -hmm. it's begin setting people free. Yep. Amen. In the natural, what happens in the spirit also happens in the natural. And, and so yes. we know yep. because of that. I just saw that this morning. When you become, you have to understand, this is the way I look at it. God looks at the world, He sees His church, His body, in the world of dead people. Right. Amen. And the enemy, the devil, the princes of the air, are operating in and through these dead people. Amen. We're the only thing that's living Amen. in Amen. spirit. Amen. And so how do we know we start getting control in there? We know we're binding the spirits of the air, the princes of your town, the princes of your apartment complex, the princes of your city. And when that starts happening, it looses God's activity. And you start seeing things like this happen. Uh, I didn't know that happened. So, Amen. Brother Burley just had a big meeting the last few days here. We're going to be there next week. Uh, we're on the other side of Houston. And we're going to be there for three days with Global Impact Things. So there's a lot of spiritual focus going in these last seven, eight, nine, Amen. ten months in Amen. Houston. And these kind of things are starting to happen. That's what he said. Amen. Amen. So why, why? Because when the church gets unified, now God can work in us and through us. Praise God. Praise God. And good things start happening. Amen. 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 And God wants to use us. Um, <clears throat> we're seeing right now a huge revival in the church of Satan. Um, mentioned it and, and some different things that's happened and I'm going to go into the whole thing. But one of the things... Um, 
the warlock of New Orleans that was talking to Brother Maggie. Mm -hmm. said, the reason why we hate you as apostolics is because you have more power in your little pinky than we will ever have. Amen. If Amen. you understood what we had to give up, the loss of self, the loss of identity, the, the loss of um, dignity, the things that we have to do to have a feeling of power within that realm, and you guys don't even know what you have. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. You just don't even know what you have. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it gets back to, and if there's anything that Satan can do in this hour is get us looking at the wrong things, looking at back at ourselves mm -hmm. rather than looking at, wait a minute, God's got me taken care of. Mm -hmm. Now I, I need to look beyond this yes. and I need to get my prayer beyond this and I need to get this because God wants to use us in powerful ways that we have not even. Yes. Amen. Uh, Amen. We, Amen. We've not even tapped into yet. Amen. I think greater works just doesn't know it have to do with numbers. It has to do with quality. Sure. I think there's things coming that we have not seen yet. Amen. Mm -hmm. But it's God. going to take us getting beyond that, where we start looking at the body of Christ like Christ looks at the body of Christ, rather than being in the way of our personal mission. All we want to get your way, you know, if I'm not leaving saying I'm out. I've been in churches and have bracing get up in one night. You got four or five girls up there, two or three guys up there, and they're praying, singing. It. And the next night, I got a whole new group, and look at that other group, and other new chapter sitting in the back of one. Well, they got the wrong advantage because I'm going to get them by the throat. <laughs> <laughs> I, they are dead. <laughs> they may not know it, but I'm going to kill that spirit. And I'm going to punch that something right in the head. <laughs> and if I've been in church long enough, there's a handful of churches I've been at preaching in 30 years. I was just like in the hole, I'm talking plain. I'm just, what, I, you went worse than last night. Why would you do sins and everything? And tonight, you went, what's going on? You got to understand, you got to be a worshiper whether you're up on the platform right. or back in the cheap seats. Amen. 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 Let everything that have breath on the platform and in the pew. Amen. 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 Right. Amen. That's what comes Amen. out of it. Amen. So, why, why are we saying it? Because you don't just worship when you're preaching. You don't just respond when you're the preacher that night. Right. Amen. Preacher to it. Amen. Preacher rally and preach to everybody. What the dead is? What the name of God? Amen. What are you doing? God, you're always saying it. Why? Because the Bible says. Amen. I won't give an affirmation. Why? I'm not just going to do it when I'm preaching. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Look at somebody say amen. 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 So whether you're on platform or singing amen. or if you're departing or what. You've got to be a participator with the whole body. Why? One member, member parts out older, what do we got? Cancer. In the body. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So what he's saying is, is when an area, a region, a district, Ohio, I'm bragging on y'all everywhere. It's talking about y'all's unity, talking about y'all being down by the stars, your camp meetings. Oh my God. What's going on? Amen. Why they got David Smith in there emceeing the service? Why? I've never heard of that. Well, they're in an apostolic realm. You need to understand that I ain't going to explain it to you. Amen. <laughs> I'm telling you right, I'm telling you what I told people. <clears throat> What's going on? The district is operating at a greater level than just the Ohio district. Amen. This is a portion of God's body that's rocking. Amen. I mean, we had general contact years ago. We had over a thousand that whole was at the crusade. Love under me. Huh? 1108. 1108 people. There was more people that night of the crusade than was the whole week of conference. Amen. People were like, what's going on? Uh, no question. Unity. Unity. Yes, sir. Now, I, I love that we're getting people that get the Holy Ghost. But don't we need also disciples? I mean, once they get born in the church, and that's, mm -hmm. I think, long term mm -hmm. is discipleship. Yes, absolutely. New church members, and that's why has to. That's why in church you got to be in unity because pastors got to have y'all together enough. Right. He can now focus on a growth process right. to get our new conference ready. Right. Because I mean, right. you know, Pentecostal, once you got the Holy Ghost, basically our growth is long hair, clean face, no jewelry, long dress, loose, right. you know, no shit. <laughs> once we get all that down, we're going to be shot hard. We're ready for heaven. 
<laughs> I, I tell church all the time, I can change you in one trip to the dress store. I can change you. I can change you one, I can, you can be completely different. One trip to the store. Now, is that all there is to holiness? No. You just change clothes. Amen. Amen. So there's a growth process. Yeah. Amen. We were dead, but then we're born again. We're living and Amen. we're like a child. Amen. So we have to grow up three dimensions of growth. Fullness, measure, and stature of Christ. Praise Our God. Lord, holy place, holy holies. Good point. Amen. Amen. You have to grow. So that answers your question. Amen. Yes, Amen. we all have to grow. But what has to happen is we need the seasoned people right. to keep growing. Right. Don't worry about these new ones. That's what the pastor's for. That's right. what the new convert care person's for. Right. He'll handle that. You keep moving to the holy holies. All right. Amen. What we did is church people been in church three years and six months. They think they're a boom shop like them now. <laughs> and they start jumping all over the car. No, you need to shut your mouth and let pastor handle them. Amen. You just live right, keep doing right, and they'll see. Amen. My mom had hair short as mine when she got the holiness. I said, how long was it before you heard a message on holiness? It was 1968 <laughs> when they went to Oklahoma City. In the first year at Brother Wayne's church, she heard her first lesson on standards and growth stuff. But she looked exactly like everybody else. How? She got, she got a break doing this whole thing. I said, man, these ladies are beautiful. They got no makeup. I'm not going to wear them. I'm not cutting her hair. And there she was, hair like mine. I'm not going to cut my hair. I got pictures of her. Her hair growing. I mean, till when I was 15, 16 years old, her hair was on the ground. And now she's getting old enough to bow her waist and she fumes about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. It off. It's all <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So, but, but the natural dress stuff, that's just natural. But in church it becomes an issue. Well, they're not dressing on Well, you know what? They were out praying to devils three times a week. You know, we'll, 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 handle, that, we'll handle that whole stuff later. Let us handle it. They all kind of held in their life. Am I doing all right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were doing drugs. Meth, they're meth addicts. We'll work out their dress a little later. We're just trying to get them off the meth. <laughs> Good point. Good point. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because the, the meth affects the natural body. Amen. And you're going to battle that until the rapture takes place. Right. So, you know, we're going we're gonna to work with this meth. We get the meth started, then we can talk to them about some other stuff. Mm -hmm. Then you have Jack Daniels and everybody. <laughs> marijuana. Now the country's legalized marijuana. A bunch of brain dead idiots we are. Yeah. Y'all vote for anybody that does that, I'm going to knock your head off. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So when people pray through, they're a baby. You don't see somebody with a two year old baby saying, Come on, you're not here. You're going to be driving a car by now. Right, right, right. You have to grow up into that. Amen. And so Amen. it is with new converts. Is that good? Yeah, it's good. New converts grow up. Now, what we got to have is the saints keep moving forward to the tabernacle. Good point. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. You used to be there. Yes. Amen. Amen. So you just keep going, keep the moment in the church Amen. moving towards the Holy Holy. Hallelujah. And everything will work out. Amen. Is that all right? Thank you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Good on that point. Amen. 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 So that's what has to happen. So you're in class, you're doing good, so you all be acting different next this today tomorrow. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So is that good? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Now that with that, I rented a bus. And took people down in the Holy Ghost. I was justified still in the church today. In fact, the one lady I'm thinking of, she works every day at the school, about for free. Her daughter's there working. Her son's in the school. Her daughter's on the platform. Amen. From Great that God. crusade in 2006. I don't think that. Everybody. That I took is still attending the church except one lady who passed. Praise God. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Anyway. What, we're, what I, I feel like we're talking about is the growth process. Amen. Because everybody has to be growing. Amen. No matter what we get. If you're a preacher, if you're a licensed preacher, you got to be growing. Mm -hmm. You know, some got to get licensed and they, well, that's it. Now they got 50, 60 people they take in and that's it. They're cool. Mm -hmm. I'm good. I mean, they get their license when they walk out. They get their license in their pocket. <laughs> that was the way I did. I hadn't done that here. That's why I did it. 
you like it, now you walk. <laughs> I mean, really? Come on. Yes, you can. You said that there's three levels of growth using the tabernacle plan. What were they again? Uh, Paul said we grew up in fullness, measure, and stature. Amen. Fullness, measure, and stature. Amen. And you lay that over. The tabernacle plan is not just an Old Testament little deal walker. Right, right. Exactly. It is the pattern. Amen. Amen. So you've got to know the tabernacle plan. Amen. The best thing I'd say is go to Brother Bankins and get it off his website. I mean, they just... Was they that eat? A, <coughs> joke, of course. But That's I mean, it's a big deal to them. Tabernacle. Right. So we, we all, they, they praise the tabernacle, but your spiritual growth is through the tabernacle. Ultimately, you end up in the third room, which is 15 by 15 square. The Ark of the Covenant was two angels bowing, looking at the mercy seat, looking at Calvary's offering, the blood from Calvary. Amen. And the Amen. glory fills your room. Amen. Amen. How did the man get through the veil? I was saying, walk through it. Well, he didn't walk through it. There was no split or divide in it. It was three curtains sewn together making one veil. Amen. The Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, draw, drew through the temple. That is the veil. Praise God. Amen. One time a year. Amen. Coming with blood in one hand and all of incense in the other. Poured the blood out of the mercy. The glory came down. Amen. And their sins were moved to him for one year. Praise God. Right. So in our spiritual growth, we grow up in fullness, outer court. To the holy place, to the holy of holies. Fullness, measure, and stature. The stature, yeah. full growth, is when you're in the holy of holies. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Can you, can you expound on fullness, what fullness is? Say it again. Can you, can you expound on all three of those? So what is fullness? What would be fullness? Fullness would be your living. You're born again. Amen. Amen. You're coming through the door. You're outside the tabernacle and you're dead. Right in the tabernacle, you're coming in through the cross, through Calvary, through the brazen altar, and you're Amen. born again. Amen. Amen. That's the in your spiritual walk, sir. That's the fullness. Yes. You go through the tabernacle and get born again. Then what else? Is that all it's good for is a new birth? Well, no. Five of the first, the five places, the offices, the, the brazen altar, labor of water, gold candle, six tables, show red, the altar of incense. The first five places take you to the glory. Praise God. You're not in the glory in the fifth position. At the altar of incense, you still aren't in the glory of God. Amen. 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 Tell somebody you got to keep pressing. You got to press through the veil to get into the glory. So Amen. that's why church, you can go to some church, they say, Thank you. Hey, hey, hey. Look at the Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They sing it. And you go to another church 25 miles down the road. They glory, glory. Hallelujah. Goosebumps jump up on your hold of it. But nothing happened at the other church. What's the difference? One church is in deeper than the other. Amen. 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 Now, they may not know it. And they get offended and get upset. Well, I'm not going to go there because they always shout and think we don't, we don't believe you got to shout that much. Well, that ain't what's going on at all. Amen. Amen. It's not about just changing choir robes and getting a good music director and getting a good drummer and everybody singing the same songs. Amen. What this is ultimately about is getting behind the veil Amen. and the glory. Amen. That's Amen. what matters. Amen. 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 So the fullness is when you're born again. You're in Amen. the tabernacle. Amen. In the, the door. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Make sense? Amen. Sure. Measure your growth more. I mean, you're operating in, in uh, you're in the gold candlesticks. You're part of the body. You want the seven gold candlesticks. The seven candlesticks are top of the seven churches. You're in intercession. Got the intercession done. Well, the Word is there. You're a person of the Word in the second dimension. And then in the fifth position, you're a person of intercession. Amen. You're a worship. You're in the fifth position. Five. Amen. Number of grace. A lot of stuff happens in the fifth position. So you go through all of it to be born again. 
Then you come back out, how does it affect my growth? Fullness, measure, stature. Then you look at it in incrementally. How, how does this affect me in this first dimension? How does this affect me in second dimension? How does this affect me in third dimension? Amen. 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 Now, ultimately, on our growth, our own personal, individual growth, uh, would ultimately depend on rapture. I think that's when we're, uh, the third dimension would be when our bodies are changed. And, of course, that won't happen until the rapture takes place in our full growth. So, at best, We'll be, we're in the second position, reaching for growth, reaching to be more like Christ, and we won't be that until the rapture takes place. I've only said that two or three times in the whole 30 years I preach, but I said, mm -hmm. he's still working on us. Amen. Amen. Yes, Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Makes sense. But I would, I would check with the maintenance and get their information about their maintenance, teaching on the tabernacle plan. He goes through that. I'm talking. I mean, if they've got all the pieces of furniture they had made up, and uh, back in 2012 I was there, they had it all in the prayer room, the back of the church. You walk in, the whole width of that back of that church was set up like the tabernacle. Wow. Unbelievable. And their church would pray through the piece of furniture, according to Brother Manning and Tom. But to walk in and see that in that church, you just, boom, <laughs> hair stood on my head. It was crazy. Wow. But you do that. You pray through that. You live through that. And it brings us into fullness, measure, and stature. Amen. The stature will happen when the rapture takes place, I believe. Amen. Even for the most spiritual guru we have in our church. <laughs> Amen. You ain't there yet. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Anybody else got a question? Did that answer the question? You had? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Now. Follow through all that. Now, what do you? What? How's that affect me Sunday? Ninety-nine percent of everything you said today ain't got nothing to do with Sunday morning. Sunday morning, you got to come in, prayer room, get your prayer time, get in your position, your office, your Sunday school class, whatever you do, and get ready. If you have Sunday school, teach your class. If you come out for morning worship, come to worship, and come in doing worship. Don't just sit there. Amen. Amen. Everybody say, I have to be a worshiper. I have to be a worshiper. You're living and breathing. You got to be a worshiper. Amen. Amen. But you can sing into your heart. So this morning, you just think, now my part today is I've got to worship. Why? Because we want to get this service behind the veil. Amen. 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 Where drugs has no implant, no alcohol, no abuse, no pornography. Amen. Nothing has Amen. control. God's got complete control. And people feel liberty. They can't explain. They don't know what it is. I got my hair standing up a lot when y'all sing that song. Well, well, you know what's going on. They're feeling God. Praise God. Amen. 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 So that's your focus when it comes to church. Now, all this other stuff, we're talking about your personal growth. Amen. Praying, intercession, what he brought about intercession, that's your goal. You want to end up there. Yes. And Amen. you may not get there for a while. Amen. But that's your goal. Amen. You want to get there. Into intercession where the where God is praying through you and you ain't got no idea what you're praying about. Amen. The Spirit of God is praying through you. Praise God. And it could be affecting anybody anywhere. Ethiopia. Praise Russia, God. China. Amen. You ain't got no idea. And I would say if you're lucky, maybe God will take you out of body and take you to the place you're praying for. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I've never said that, but anyway. <laughs> You know, she's she, not beautiful. She's not beautiful, but I don't know. I'm telling you, you're not me. Why did China go into the prison? Amen. She said, help us. Amen. First time they had this quote, I'll stop with this. First time she knew, they lived in a little country place out in Guthrie. Her husband was going to work. And she was right through. They passed her in the church. And she was lonely. No TV, no phone, no nothing. No internet. And she was washing dishes. And she said, Lord, I'd really like to talk to you today. We should just go on. She sat in the chair and I said, this chair, you sit in that chair, let's just talk. She was crying, praying, washing dishes. She turned the water off, all of a sudden she heard something. Yes. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> all of a sudden she hears the door open. That day, 
Every day, Jesus came in the house, Praise sat God. down in that chair, Praise God. and they talked. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. She told us that at Brother Ewing's at store meeting on Amen. Tuesday night. Amen. It's just a dinner night, kind of get to know each other. She walked in, blew away. She said, you ain't. I said, she's she not here. She said, jumped up. She couldn't see. I walked in the door. She said, I'm so glad to hear. So glad to hear. I want to show you our house. She said, I've seen your house. They haven't been in the house a year. She said, not ain't been down there. She said, I've been here. I said, no, I think we just didn't have to be. She said, no, I've been here. What do you mean you've been here? She said, I'm standing. We're standing in the door. She said, I'll explain your house to you. She said, that room right back to the door over there, that's your piano. Big room, got the piano, got the couches in there, some instruments. Y'all sing and pray in there. <coughs> <laughs> that chair right over that corner, that's where Brother Ewing always sits. He was sitting there today. <laughs> the kitchen's right here. Now, if you turn left at this kitchen and you go right down the hallway, there's a door, cat corners, and that's the door to your bedroom. She said, You walk through the door, your bed's over to the right, to the right of your bedroom, there's a big door. You walk in there, and that's Brother Ewing's closet. You go through the second door, and that's the restroom, and there's a door there on the right, and you go in that chair closet. She said, how do you know that? She said, oh, she said, I've been here many nights. <laughs> I mean, there were about 50, 60 people, and it got quiet. She was a short woman, over no teeth, reading that place like a comic book. Praise God. Amen. She said, you walk out of your bedroom, and you walk straight. You walk right through your laundry. Your dryer's on the right, your washer's on the left. Walk right through the door, sit that door. Brother Ewing's office, his office, his desk is over to the side. Got a big cabinet here, got couches here. Said there's a door right here to the back side. Walk through that door, that's where Brother Ewing's books are. She said, Sister, Shut up. how did you know that? Peter's running. She said, I've been in his house many nights. Praise God. What, what are you doing? She said, Sister Ewing, I pray you all for more nights than I can even think about. Praise now, I knew all the personal stuff. Some Max, but I know all this stuff. I've been preaching here 23 years. I know what's going on. She says, she has never been in Lake Charles wow. physically. Wow. Amen. Amen. She walked in, sat down in the chair, and started talking. 10, 15 minutes. She said, no, you ain't saying. He said, oh, I will, baby. We have really not going to be starting yet, but Bonnie and Aaron will be here. We'll, be, we'll sing. She kept talking. Five, six minutes. But you ain't saying. Well, 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 Bonnie's not here yet, man. We'll be one more time to five, six minutes. But you ain't you ain't just saying. She said, well, Bonnie's still not here, baby. She said, Tis so sweet to trust. And she started singing just like that. <laughs> the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Brother J.D. Pugh's in there. David Shatwell. Brother J.J. Boren. Brother Mark Boren. Brother Ewing sitting in the chair. And there were about 80 of us here, packed in that front living room. And when she started howling, she called singing. The Holy Ghost dropped in there. J.T. Pugh lunged out of his seat on the floor. Just like that. Screaming. Amen. Amen. People went to pray. There was young men. Started praying through the Holy Ghost. Level by midnight he quit. Never ate. Amen. How? Amen. Moving in the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Praise God. And terrible thing about it, we had Jeremy was on a video camera through the bushes in the front living room taping it, and we can't find that tape. Oh. It's somewhere. They won't find it. Will they? Amen. So what are you saying? I'm saying they're just Amen. a level Amen. that we can get. Amen. And we may not get there all the time. Amen. But it's what we're pushing for. We're pushing to get behind the veil. Amen. Prayer meeting in the morning, if you get behind the veil. Amen. Amen. Intercession, praying for things Amen. you don't understand, but God's pray, God's praying through. Everybody say God. God, God is praying, praying through. through. God's Amen. going to pray. Amen. Amen. And that's what they get really happy. I don't know. Yeah. Amen. 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 Any questions? Praise God. Amen. Well, good. Amen. Amen. So that's that's the focus. This group here, I would say, Amen. is as Brother Thompson had mentioned about intercession. That's your goal. Yeah. Get in prayer. When you get another prayer, you don't always know what you pray for. In fact, you may not ever know what you pray for. But you know God did so. Praise God. Amen. There'll be somebody Amen. like Tom Maxwell. Amen. 
was driving his truck in Chicago, we broke down, called him, told him to come help me get the truck, told the truck, we're not going to be there until Monday. Made him mad, he quit. Drove to Walkerton, pulled his pickup truck, they dropped him off at Walkerton because his wife was in church, dropped him off the truck, walked in the back door, set the 15 minutes preaching, went y'all and got a hold of us, and his whole life changed. Wow! Who was praying? Who, who, had, who prayed to make that truck quit working? What made him all of a sudden think, I'm leaving this truck and I'm going to church? Praise God. Praise Somebody God. was praying. Amen. And God Amen. was saying, you know what? As far as your truck's going to go. Yeah. And he prayed through. So that can happen. Amen. Amen. Say amen. Amen. I'm done. Amen. Very good. Amen. Just my... This is not because we've got gray hair. Well, I have, I do have some, specifically the color Bethany, but I do have some. And, and I don't say the story to attention myself, but when I was probably four or five years old, my I had a sister five years and ten years old. My parents were at the store, left us home. And all of a sudden, my older sister said, it's time to pray. And the three of us went into prayer. Went into intercession. Amen. And at the time, we found out later, Elyria's church van, filled with their young people, rolled. Oh. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And a 14-year-old, a 9-year-old, and a 4 year old Amen. We're interceding in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And no one was killed. Beautiful. Praise God. Beautiful. Hallelujah, Jesus. This is not just, there, there's no age limits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God wants to use. Amen. He wants to use. Amen. He, Amen. You guys can experience things at, at youth that we, our lives are so busy, we're, we're going to walk past. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And physically. Amen. The older you get, I think, it becomes, uh, how do you say it? Unless you can handle it in the spirit. We can get there quick because we know how to pray through the mess and get into the Holy Ghost. Amen. But if you learn to at a younger age, you can get in there and stay in there longer and make a bigger impact. Amen. 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 So, what would be hindrances to prayers, effective prayer? The hindrances of effective praying or getting to that place that you know, blocks God, yeah. or blocks your ability to get through to talk about the lid being on. Yeah. Well, I think we do mention, like I said over here, the horizontal. What could horizontally affect me from getting in? Amen. Well, it could be things that you're lifestyle, things that you're living. Things right. that you need to give up, cussing, right? Uh, what you're watching, right? All the, I mean, you know, you. I I opened up the internet and in about three clicks. Yeah. I can be in an area. I didn't type nothing in. Just clicked on something. And clicked on that. And clicked on that. And boom. This is a million times worse than television. Right. I didn't get in the way of it, but I'm still watching. Right. Right. So, those are things that hurt you. What are you doing in private? What are you doing on your own? Nobody knows. Amen. Your private life. Uh, and actually, what are you looking at? What are you reading? What are you listening to? What music are you listening to? Walked in the other day, one of my boys, he's uh, just turned 15. He listened to country music. He said, oh, what are you doing? I, listen to country. I just found country music. Nana told me about it. Tom, I like it. I said, what in the world? I said, let me hear it. Some old crazy Western song, but I like Merle Haggard back in the days, you know. <laughs> and it's just, you know, talking about drinking and drugging, whoring around. I said, well, you know what that is? No, you don't know what whoring around is. I said, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I explained to him, a tear coming to his eye. I said, you don't need to listen to that. Amen. Why? Because it Amen. opens you up. Right. So what you've got to do is you've got to, you've got to shut the doors on things what pastor's talking about back here, horizontally. Amen, amen. 
pornography, Amen. stealing, Amen. cheating in school, that will all affect you. You start praying, trying to pray, you start trying to pray, the Holy Ghost, you're going to hit, you're going to hit a roof and you're not going to be able to get through it. That's what's holding you back. So you need to repent about cheating, Amen. lying, Amen. all those kind of And as you take off those weights, all of a sudden your confusion will make you whack right through it. That's just in the natural. Then the spirit, you can fight. You can be battling against the spirit in the area. Spirit on your house, your family, you don't know it. But once you get into intercession, I don't think, you know, I'm thinking about what am I praying? When I'm in intercession, I'm not thinking what am I praying against? What am I battling? I'm just battling. Praise God. And I don't know that I've ever been in intercession and when I got this, I don't know what I'm praying against. Now, some people made it, it's fine. It's just me. I just went to work. That's it. Amen. That's all that matters. I don't need to go deeper and get all this. Amen. Uh, all that. Does that answer your question? Amen. So, natural stuff. So, we, we're battling and natural things. What's so exciting is that it doesn't matter who you are. If you're in the kingdom, you can reach that point. And you might be praying for somebody, like you said, in China. Absolutely. And God will use your prayer. Yeah. To deliver them. That's amazing. Yeah. And you ain't got no Thank idea. You, How does it get? you ain't got no clue. Like, most of the time, people don't know what they pray for. Don't have clue. Amen. Every now and then, a preacher, somebody, a best of man, or somebody, or a situation, or somebody Amen. will tell a story, and you'll just, pop, hair stands up, and be oh my God. Praise you realize, God. you pray intercessionally, you hoard, but you ain't got a clue what you're doing. Amen. 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 But you know it's working. Praise God. Amen. Praise so whenever you get to pray, if you get into intercession, get to pray in the Holy Ghost a little bit. Don't stress out over what you're praying against. What did I pray for? No matter. Amen. God wants you. My answer to be with God wants me to know He'll tell me. Amen. And so far, He ain't ever told me. Amen. I've never been a few times I've prayed. And I know what's going to happen. Amen. And this is probably the first time I've talked about it. Give an intercession and ward and know and won something, but I don't know what it was or who it was or what it was for. Praise God. But God did. Amen. 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 All right. yeah. I talk about um, miracles answered revelation it comes through submission. Mm -hmm. So, and, and it's different types of submission submission to the word, submission to the body, submission to the spirit, submission mm -hmm. to the elders, pastors, mm -hmm. submission directly to the sovereign. Um, those kinds of things. And so if the flesh is rising up, mm -hmm. there can be no submission. Right. Right. And, and, and so you, you can't you can't get past your flesh to be able to submit to the word. You know, we can say all you have to do is ask anything, my name faithfully it shall be done. But that means you need to submit to the word because he said all you have to do is ask. Mm -hmm. But when your flesh is standing in between you and submission to the word. That's not the flow in your life. That's correct. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. And that's why sometimes people get faith away. I've seen faith that tongues interpretation. Faith prophecies. Amen. I mean, you get prophecy and ain't nobody really feel nothing. They just, are well, they faking it? How are they faking it? Well, number one, the easiest thing to fake about your growth is how you look. Easiest thing to fake is how you look. Takes no spiritual guidance to look like you look, look like you look, look like me, or look like no spiritual guidance. I I can dress like pastor. Okay, I got you. <laughs> you can dress like a pastor's wife. Just look at it. Okay, you can do that. No Holy Ghost. No nothing, and still be an absolute, teetotal, rebellious hellion. That look just like you. <laughs> How's that happen? You're faking it until you make it. But you can't fake it to make it. Amen. Amen. Church. Amen. They say amen. amen. So again, I'm going to say it again because I don't say this much. I've made some remarks here about dressing different and looking and holding all that. It's all correct. All the standards, it's all correct. It's all biblical. It's all in order. But that's the easiest thing to fake about your growth. Amen. It's how you look. It's 
100% right. It's also the easiest to fake. We say amen. 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 So what do you got to do? You got to understand this is my growth. Right. Where you're at now, dress and modest, that's all correct. But now what about that person in you? Because this isn't you. You're inside that. That's not you. That, but you're inside there. Amen. Amen. The outside is going to reflect what's on the inside. But now, Amen. you can just do this in the natural. So I can dress up like preacher. Be, be an immoral, nasty, vile, pornographic, whoring around preacher. Somebody asked me, what, what, what did you do in drop out at the hotel? I'm in the room. I was in, in revival with Brother Keys for four and a half months. We, we lived in the hotel for four and a half months. Straight. What did you do? In the room, kids did school work. I go down into the lobby and corner of the lobby and I'll, I just read a little bit, go to church and pray a little bit. Come lunchtime, I go take him down to the cafeteria, eat lunch, go back to the room, sleep, start getting ready for church. What did y'all do today? I tell him every day, same thing. God, you don't have to do that? No. <laughs> about, about three weeks, finally on Mondays, we'd go to San Francisco, spend the day in San Francisco. Look at the shops, go around, look at Pier 39, big shopping area. In the day at Giardelli Chocolate, about 7 o'clock, we go to Giardelli Chocolate, fresh homemade ice cream, just blow me shot. <laughs> and I drive back to the desk, go to Red Line, which was at that time now was Double Tree, four and a half months. But if I wanted to be calm, it's easy to do. Not because I've done it, but it would be very easy to do. Everybody say amen. 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 So the outside, I mean, you can dress that up. It's all right, all proper, and all that. But the inside man, that's why Jesus said, cleanse the inside of the cup first. Amen. Why? Amen. That the outside may be clean. Amen. It doesn't say that the outside is clean. Amen. Because you clean the inside. But it may be clean now because you have the inside clean. Now your outside Amen. can be clean. Amen. Amen. So the inside affects the outside. All right. Hallelujah. And there'll always be a revelation whether. It's just conformity, or whether it has been a transformation. Sure, there's a whole difference between conforming and transforming. When God deals with you, pastors preaching or teaching you in a class or a new conference course or whatever, and God deals with you, very apparent what's happening. The Holy Ghost is moving. Amen. The Holy Ghost Amen. is moving. Amen. 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 So, we'll walk in the Holy Ghost, be unified. Vertically and horizontally. Allow to take you to intercession. How can you go? That's up to God. Amen. 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 And then, you know, you don't want to go run around to the house of intercession, man. I'm out in the 15th dimension out there. Why don't you do that? I remember Sister Chenault told this story in that room with about 90 of us and probably 30 of them were pastors. And there was a big name preacher. And there was Jerome Moore. Brother Mark Morgan, Brother Ewing, Brother George Guy, all these preachers. I'm talking. There's a man walking in the Holy Ghost sitting there, but I didn't. I was number two under Brother Morgan in the structure, but I didn't say nothing. That's why I was grabbing a broom and pushing. Because there was some thunder up in that house. Amen. I mean, they were spiritual authority. I mean, walking in it. Amen. So. Amen. You just when, when the Holy Ghost uses you, thank God. Amen. Keep on going. Amen. He uses you, keep on going. Don't, don't, don't get drunk on it. And, you know, sitting there, you're called to preach. No. <laughs> you're not called to preach because you give message in tongues. You're not called to preach because you taught a Bible study. You're not. That's not it at all. Amen. I mean, when I went to Indianapolis, Brother Moody called me to come sit up. I think I made mention this here. Uh, last night, yeah. Uh, he said, when I got there, he said, man, you're going to sit. Waving me back in the back. Platforms I got to go back there. He said, you're here? Yeah, I'm going to do it. He to come. Pastor said, it's good for us to go. How long have you been here? Two weeks. Really? You already got a job? Yeah, where are you working? I had a job two days later. Sitting in church. Man, I'm 
I made $8,000 last two weeks. Oh my God, that's awesome. She said, so you're here, yep, yep, and, and Brother Mooney's. Six foot one, six foot two. He points at his garage and said, okay, now listen to me. He said, there's chairs all on that platform, but none for you. I've got an office back there, an office here across from my office. Brother Erson used to use it. He said, it's available for somebody, but it's not for you. He pointed me at the chest, point down talking to me. Just big, loud voice. Tears start flowing. You are going to set, you understand? You're going to set this church, and you're going to set till I tell you. You understand? Yeah, I'm tears rolling. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He said, all right, you okay? Yes, sir. He said, okay, go sit down. He didn't say 50 words to me in the next nine months. Walk past the house, shake hands, and people look at me. He didn't say nothing. Until God was about four months into it, back in church, same place I was. He was preaching the place with dead than hammer. He was preaching, his hair was down, he was sweat flying. He got down to the altar on the right hand side from the back of the church, left hand side of the platform, and he got to talking in the sweat flying off him. I said, This is so stupid. This guy's leaving this whole thing. Buried with a bunch of dead head. Like, God, this is horrible. I'm gonna leave. Well, I you can't leave, he's still preaching. I sit back down and I sat back in the chair, threw my knee up on the pew, and did just like this. And as soon as I got settled, the Holy Ghost said, that's your problem. Now, he ain't said nothing to me four and a half months. This is what he said, that's your problem. You think I need you. I don't need you. I use bushes, donkeys, and chickens. I don't need you. <laughs> bushes, he's talked through. He's talked through donkeys. Amen. He's talked through chickens. He said, I don't need you. And now I'm shaking. And Brother Moody says, I stand. I'm opening the altar. And when he said it, I darted out of that seat in the back of that church. And for the next three months, every night, Wednesday or Sunday, I'm right there in that altar. Amen. Amen. Why? Because I knew God had me there for submission. Finally, he called me and wanted to be with the high school basketball team. Yes, sir. You got any questions? No, sir. Then one of the cookie plates ticked me off. <laughs> I can stand under a basket and jump up and crack the ring. Whack me. He's not good at that. Anything. So I work cut it for him. Got him going. It's New Year's Eve. Mother Ursula was there. Sitting on the front row of the building. And I'm sitting there. I see Mother Ursula lean over the money and say something when he does. I say, he's talking about it. Thought comes through my head. They're talking about it. I say, oh, oh, jeez. I start crying. I'm trying to say, it's all right. It's all right. Oh, my God. You're such an idiot. There's 3,000 people in here. They're not talking about you. Brothers, then the preaching service is done, pulpit right here. I was straight at the altar. Pulpit edges right here. I'm down here just praying, just like this. Weeping, crying, begging God, forgive me. My head's this way, and all of a sudden, 30 minutes into the service, altar service, Brother Louis comes on this side and leans over, and in that ear, he said, Bishop said, That's enough. You're preaching Thursday. And he walked off. He didn't say nothing else to me. Come to church. Thursday, he said, You ready? I said, did my best. He said, okay. Introduced me to preach. I preached. The Holy Ghost failed. People came to the front altar. They didn't go behind the building, which they always did a Calvary back behind the altar. Big, huge area for prayer people. So that's why they did it. They came right down the front. Eight people got the Holy Ghost. Praise God. I hadn't said a word for no man to have been in nine months. And so what am I saying? Eleven months, he asked me, how are you doing? I told him I had a few places to preach. He didn't remember them. He sent me out to them. They weren't paying me. He said, what? So he wrote me a check for $2,000 for three or four shirts I preached. Got talking. You need to travel four, five, six months. Come back. Preach for your friends. Come back. I said, brother, well, I ain't going the way I'm telling you. When it got done, he said, okay, you take off and you go evangelize. When you have two Sundays in a row with no place to preach, call me. Come home and figure something out. I've been trying for 31 years. Praise God. Amen. Amen. That first four years, I called three pastors after I called him because the Lord dealt with me about preachers no one that I knew. I'd never been to their church, ever. Never been in the city of Stillwater, Oklahoma. He said, it's only those called. Stay a month and a half at every one of them. Praise God. Amen. And that's why I'm here today. Amen. Amen. Why? I couldn't tell you. Praise God. Except... That's what God said. That's what my pastor said. Until you get two Sundays off. If you do, come back home. Praise God.
others. Why does that get be submitted? You've got to be. Whatever you're doing, key elder of the church, key preacher, key assistant, stay submitted. Amen. Amen. And everything will be all right. Amen. 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 Any more questions? Comments? Amen. Time to be over, huh? Are we tired? <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Very it's good. beautiful when the, when the church is submitted and everybody's, you know, it's just a beautiful feeling. I mean, Amen. You can tell when you're traveling, you come to church with their submission, you can just feel it. I'm before you ever get to church, you can tell. When there's trouble, I'm going to feel God wants us all to be together to be one. Because why? You've got a big goal. What's a goal? I said something the other day. I'll close with this. 7.4 billion people in the world. Amen. How many think we got saved? Two million. Million? Two million people? Let's say two million. We got 7.4 billion people in the world. If God, between now and December, saved a million people, or in a large period, would that be awesome? Amen. Yeah. 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 What would that do to the needle? Not very. Mm -hmm. If we had 10 million in three months, what would that do to the needle? If we had 100 million in three months, what would it do to the needle? Maybe we would. Mm -hmm. 100 million of 7.4 billion ain't squat. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of revival we're talking about. Now, Mass, the majority is going to be lost. We know that. Amen? Amen. That's what's going to happen. That's right. But how many can we get saved? Amen. Amen. Could we get 500? Could we get 1 billion? Do you think 1 billion of 7.4 billion people saved? Would that be cool? Yeah. Amen. To see a move of God around this world in a few months. A billion, a billion and a half, two billion, three billion. You still ain't got half the people. Amen. Three billion. What's keeping it from happening? His body. Right. We've got to have unity. Amen. 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 Horizontally. Amen. Amen. And then focus. Because when it starts happening, we're going to be praising God and we revival reports. And somebody's going to say, sha, sha, da, 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 da. And when they stop, a horn will sound and we're going to be out of here. Uh, that good. Uh, Thank God. Yeah. One, two, three. Amen. That fast. We're out of here. Amen. So we're that Amen. 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 If I never see you again, I love you and thank you for listening to my friend. I love you too. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Amen.